Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So Manchester United have agreed a first refusal option to sign Louis Gomez from Sporting Lisbon. The fee is around £14 million. He is only at the age of 16. I think he signed his first professional contract, was it the other week? He signed a five-year contract with Sporting Lisbon and he's been at Sporting Lisbon since the age of six. So he has been there around a decade now. Obviously, we've purchased players from Sporting Lisbon before. Obviously, we've got Marcus Rojo from Sporting Lisbon. we got Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon back in January. We got Cristiano Ronaldo from Sporting Lisbon and we got Nani from Sporting Lisbon. Don't really know much about this Louis Gomez, but I heard he will be the next Figo, apparently. And these this story is stemming from a lot of media outlets. You know, it's coming from the Metro, it's coming from the Mirror, it's also coming from the Daily Mail Daily Mail. Yeah, seeing a lot of reports. So that's the breaking news on that. <clears throat> now, let's delve into another topic. So I was reading reports yesterday and it says that Manchester United are eyeing a move for Federico Valverde from Real Madrid. And it says Paul Pogba could be part of the deal. Now, Federico Valverde has got a substantial release clause. His release clause is around £640 million. I think he's under contract with Real Madrid until 2025. And he's predominantly a box-to-box -box midfielder, is Federico Valverde. Now, would you take him at Manchester United? Obviously, Paul Pogba made an admission the other week saying that one day he wants to join Real Madrid. Don't forget last year, Paul Pogba was talking a lot about Real Madrid and Zinedine Zidane, and he said he wants to leave Manchester United because he's seeking for a new challenge. Mundo Deportivo recently said that Barcelona um, are interested in signing Paul Pogba next summer. Don't forget, we recently triggered that 12-month extension on Paul Pogba's contract. So that means Paul Pogba's under contract now with the club until 2022. Uh, Fabrizio Romano recently confirmed this, but I'm still expecting Paul Pogba to leave Manchester United next summer. There's obviously no been stories of him going back to Juventus. Paul probably did endure four good years with Juventus. The vast majority of his performances at Manchester United have been totally comparison to his ones at Juventus. <clears throat> now, I think Paul Pogba has endured a bad start to this season. He did all right when he came on against Newcastle recently. He has had some good periods as a Manchester United player, like I mentioned. He did well towards the end of last season. His combination with Bruno Fernandes was good. He also did well in that three-month period when Solskjaer was the interim manager. But prior to that, has been mainly inconsistent. This season is Paul Pogba's fifth season at the club since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016. As it stands at the moment, Pob is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. Pob has sustained a few injuries as a Manchester United player. You know, for the vast majority of last season, he had that ankle injury, so didn't really have a perception on him. Pob has made over 100 appearances for us in all competitions since he rejoined. He's won two trophies at the club, and that was the Europa League and the League Cup. And he endured a difficult time under the Mourinho era. Some people think Mourinho got sacked because of Paul Pobber. Well, that was one of the reasons. But Mourinho didn't get on with any of our top players, did he? 
And we had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but we had to let him go due to limited appearances. Don't forget, before the start of the season, Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, came out and said that his client wants to stay at Man United. This was during the summer, and he said he'll all talks over a new long-term contract. Now, we was critical of Mini Raliola at the turn of the year. Main explanation is because he publicly criticised Solskjaer and Manchester United, didn't he? Uh, so that's the breaking news on that. But before, you know, Real Madrid have tried to sacrifice a few of their players to get Pogba. You know, Juventus, they've obviously tried to do the same. Uh, PSG, I think, tried it at one point. But uh, yeah, I think he'll stay for at least this season. You know, there was rumours the other week saying that he could leave the football club in January. Uh, I think we'll find it hard to get more than the £89 million that were paid for him. But we could still get maybe in the £70-odd million pound range for Pogba. <clears throat> so that's the breaking news on that. Now, I want to give you some early team news for the PSG Manchester United game. I give you my preview this morning. Now, I think Alex Tellez is set to start tomorrow night. That will be his debut for the football club. Alex Tellez didn't play any part in the win against Newcastle. I actually expected him to play against Newcastle. I think Alex Tellez will be a good signing for Manchester United. Uh, we got Alex Tellez for just over £15 million with add-ons included and Tellez signed a four-year contract with the club with an option of a further year and he currently, he's currently going to be wearing the number 27 shirt and obviously now he's going to be our first-choice left-back, you know. Edison Cavani, I think he'll play in the game. He'll start. Edison Cavani and Alex Tellez uh, were both recently in training. Um, it's their first time, I think, of training at Manchester United. Edison Cavani will be making his debut for the football club. Edison Cavani will be reuniting with PSG because PSG is his former club. Edison Cavani didn't play any part in the Newcastle win uh, due to COVID-19 restrictions. We got Edison Cavani on a three transfer from, and he signed a two-year contract with the football club with over £200,000 a week and Edison Cavani is going to be wearing the number seven shirt isn't there? Uh, Donny van der Beek, I think he could start the game. Donny van der Beek has not yet made his full debut for the football club. Uh, Donny van der Beek didn't start against Newcastle, but he came on. Solskjaer insists that Donny van der Beek will start in the coming weeks and he'll get his chance. I think Donny van der Beek has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. We got Donny van der Beek for around £40 million from Ajax. Um, he signed a five-year contract with the football club with an option of a further year. And he currently wears the number 34 shirt. So I think he's considering changing his position and putting him on that left-hand side. So I think, you know... They could be starting the game. Maybe the war, but we'll see. I think uh, Juan Mata, he'll probably be involved in the game. Juan Mata did very, very well in the 4 1 win against Newcastle. Like I said, you know, Juan Mata had got on the 60s. Hold up play was very, very good. And he's had a very, very good start to this season. He didn't only do well in the Newcastle game, he also did very, very well in the two games in the Carabao Cup. He did well against Luton and he also did well against Brighton and I think he got man of the match in both of them games. And I say Juan Mata should get more opportunities. Juan Mata has enjoyed around six years at Manchester United. You know, we got him back in 2014 from Chelsea for just under £40 million. 
Juan Mata scored 50 goals in 258 appearances for the club in all competitions. He recently turned down the 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. Uh, Mason Greenwood, I think he could be unavailable. Um, he didn't obviously play against Newcastle. Solskjaer uh, explained why he didn't play against Newcastle because he wasn't fit enough, Mason Greenwood. Uh, Anthony Martial, he'll be available to play. Martial obviously didn't play against Newcastle uh, because don't forget Martial got sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham and he got given a free match suspension in the league. So now obviously he's served one match, he's got two matches to serve. I don't think Anthony Martial's enjoyed the best start to this season. But I thought last season he was very, very good, Anthony Martial. And he was very, very good in his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. Martial's enjoyed five years or so at Manchester United. Uh, Marcus Rashford, he'll play. Um, I think Marcus Rashford's really, really improved um, under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. I think he's had a good career at Man United so far. Did really well in the Newcastle game, you know, got two assists. Also got his got the fourth goal, won the penalty. And Rashford had other chances, sh chances so he could have had more than one goal. Uh, Rashford's now, what, 22? He's been a United player since the age of seven. So he has been with us around 15 years and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, I expect him to be involved in the game. Bruno Fernandes, he was absolutely exceptional against Newcastle. Um, he obviously scored. Got an assist. He also missed a penalty and he had a goal disallowed. And Bruno Fernandes has definitely made the difference in the team. He really, really has. Bruno Fernandes has been at Manchester United now for over eight months. And he's won some Matt Busby Player of the Year award. I think he's won Premier League Player of the Month around three times, reflects on his good run of performances. And Solskjaer is backing Bruno Fernandes. Uh, last week, Bruno Fernandes denied that he had a bust up with Solskjaer. And for a bit sure, Romano had confirmed that there was no problem between Bruno Fernandes and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But there was reports saying that Bruno Fernandes had lost faith in Solskjaer. And he was demanding him out and he said Bruno Fernandes was frustrated with the board over the lack of signings. The Sun recently said that, you know, Madrid and Barcelona are interested in him. But like I said, you know, the Sun isn't a reliable source. Um, he's definitely the best, one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired and probably the best signing we've made under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era, Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Paul Pogba, I think he could be involved in this game. Um, hopefully, you know, he can do well and he can rejuvenate himself. Uh, Matic, you know, he could be involved in the game. Matic hasn't had the best of starts to the season, to be honest with you. Um, he had some good games towards the end of last season. Uh, Matic will stay at the club for at least, you know, this season, I think. You know, Matic has endured over three years or so now at Manchester United. Uh, we got him from Chelsea back in 2017 for just over £40 million, or was it actually £40 million? Pounds. Uh, Fred and McTominway, I don't want them to be involved in this game. I, f I don't think they was that good in the game against Newcastle, Fred and McTominway, if I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, Daniel James... I don't know, will he be involved? Um, I de he definitely won't start, that's one thing I do know. Uh, I don't think Daniel James was that good against Newcastle, but I don't think he was terrible. That's one thing I will say. Uh, Luke Shaw, do you think he'll uh, play? Well, if Solskjaer goes with the 5-3-2, then obviously you know, he could put Luke Shaw at left centre-back and then obviously you know, put Alex Tellez at wing-back, couldn't they? Uh, Luke Shaw wasn't too bad against Newcastle apart from the own goal, obviously, in the first two minutes of the game. My only element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he is injury prone. 
you know, Luke Shaw's enjoyed a good six years now at Manchester United. Paid around £30 million pounds in from Southampton back in 2014. You know, towards the end of last season, sustained an ankle injury. And that the first part of last season was out with injury. Um, Harry Maguire, he deserves another chance. So he'll play tomorrow. I think Harry Maguire was very, very good in the 4-1 win against Newcastle. Like I mentioned, he got our equaliser from the corner. Very good, Eddie, it was. He was very effective in the air. He was well composed in the back line. And it was good to see. It really, really was because prior to the Newcastle game, Harry Maguire has had a pretty poor start to the season. Don't forget, Harry Maguire recently got sent off in England's 1-0 defeat to Denmark. Uh, Solskjaer confirmed prior to the Newcastle game that Harry Maguire was a doubt because Harry Maguire uh, had sustained a knock. And the other month, he had that incident in Greece. But Solskjaer said, didn't he, that you know he's backing Harry Maguire to bounce back from his early season troubles. Um, obviously, he's our current captain. There has been a lot of Manchester United fans saying that we should take the captaincy off Harry Maguire. And I personally think we should give the captaincy to Bruno Fernandes because Bruno Fernandes is the one that shows fantastic leadership in the team. But this is Harry Maguire's second season at the club. Obviously, you know, we got Harry Maguire last summer in a deal worth £80 million from Leicester, so he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. Victor Lindelof will probably start. I If Bay is available, I'd play Bay, to be honest with you, because like I've said, I think Bay is a better centre-half than Victor Lindelof, but... Bay is too injury prone. That's my element of concern. You know, Victor Lindelof weren't too bad against Newcastle. Obviously, he was far from the best. But he's not on Harry Maguire's level, is it? Maguire's level, is he? So, I think it's very beneficial if we can get a new centre-half in next year that can go alongside Harry Maguire. You know what I mean? Uh, Alman Bissaka, I think he's obviously going to start the game. Alman Bissaka was very, very good against Newcastle. Scored his first Manchester United goal on his 50th appearance for the club. In the Newcastle game, to be fair, he showed some good attacking intent, defensively very, very good. And we need, yeah, and that's one see more of that from Bissaka because prior to the Newcastle game, he hasn't had the best of starts to the season. Struggled a bit towards the end of last season, didn't he? We got Anwan Bissaka in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace last summer. And I think uh, David De Gea will probably start in goal. Um, I think David De Gea is going to remain our number one goalkeeper for this season. To be fair, I'll credit De Gea did well in the Newcastle game. Made some good saves to deny Callum Wilson and Maximan. But I've always said, you know, I think we should put Dean Henderson as number one now because I think Dean Henderson is reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper because Dean Henderson has got that experience behind him. So there you go. Um, Phil Jones and Alex Tuanzabe, they're still out with injury, I think. We've only got a couple of injuries now, haven't we? But I'm telling you, you know, this will be a very, very tough game against Paris Jean Germain. Um, I presume that PSG will be the favourites. Now, don't forget, we're not PSG out of the last 16 last, last year, didn't we? We're beating them by three goals to one. You know, we overcame a two-goal deficit because we was 2-0 down from the first leg. But, you know, PSG got to the Champions League final last season, didn't they? Obviously, you know, they lost to Bayern Munich by one goal to nil. The positive news from a Manchester United perspective is that PSG have got quite a few players out, haven't they? Uh, some are actually, you know, injured. I think they've got Danilo Pereira out, I heard, for a few weeks. They've got Juan Berner out as well, I think, with injury. He's out until March next year. 
Uh, Julian Draxler, he's been out for them recently. Leandro Paredes, I think he's out with injury. Mario Cardi, I think he's got a knee injury, so he's unavailable. Uh, Marco Verratti, he's recently been injured. Uh, Marquino, Marquinhos, um, I think he's also out with injury. I think there's been quite a lot of PSG players that have had to self-isolate recently, you know, due to COVID-19. Ander Herrera and Angel Di Maria will be reuniting with Manchester United. I think Ander Herrera is going to be playing. Um, I was disappointed that uh, we let Ander Herrera go because I wanted Manchester United to keep him. Um, Angel Di Maria... Don't forget, you know, we got him under the Louis van Gaal era, Angel Di Maria. He did have a good start, to be fair, to his Manchester United career. Uh, Neymar's fit for PSG. Uh, Ron E recently out with injury, but Thomas Tuchel um, has confirmed that Neymar's going to be available. Uh, Mbappe will obviously be playing. Uh, Mbappe and Neymar are the two most expensive players in the world at the moment. But yeah, this is away from home. Uh, PSG have got a really, really good home record, don't forget. Uh, the other two teams in our group are RP Leipzig. That's going to be another difficult game. And Istanbul, Basakshia. I'm hopeful that we can get to the knockouts. No one's obviously expecting us to win the Champions League, are they? They're not. Like I said to you, the other, uh, the other season, not last season, seasons before, you know, we got to the quarterfinals of the Champions League and, you know, we did get knocked out by Barcelona 4-0 on aggregate. Uh, the last time we obviously won the Champions League was back in 2008 when we beat Chelsea in the final in Moscow. We've won the Champions League three times, haven't we? Won it in 2008, won it in 1999. That was a treble winning season. The club's greatest achievement. And we won it back in, what, 1968. But yeah, um, like I said recently, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe for now. The pressure has eased off him, reflecting on that 4-1 win against Newcastle. Now, if we hadn't beaten Newcastle, I think Solskjaer could have been sacked as Manchester United manager. Now, we've played four games so far this season in the league. We've won two and we've lost two. But probably Solskjaer does need more time, doesn't he? I still don't think personally he's the right man for Manchester United. Like I've said to you before, I thought he was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Ferguson's guidance, but I just don't think he's good enough to succeed as a manager because he hasn't got that proven pedigree. Reflecting now on Solskjaer's been at Manchester United, he has gained managerial experience. You know, Solskjaer's been at the football club now for almost two years. And Solskjaer's just got under two years left on his current contract. And don't forget, Woodward was saying the other week that he's prepared to sack Solskjaer if things do not improve. He's nearly managed 100 games now as Manchester United manager. And he's won over 50 games as Manchester United manager, hasn't he? You know, this season is his second full season at the football club. And I said to you, didn't I, that he's got to exceed his expectations And I did say, didn't I, at the start of the season, what would represent a good season for Man United, and that's finishing in the top four, maybe the top two or top three if possible, and winning the trophy. You know, we have not yet won out in terms of Subway under the Solskjaer era, and we haven't won a trophy for over three years. Uh, there's still certain players that have got to improve because there has been players that have been underperforming, but the players that were underperforming performed well against Newcastle, to be fair. Uh, Solskjaer's got to improve his decision-making because in a lot of his games at Manchester United, he's been tactically naive. You know, so, yeah. Solskjaer will get sacked at the moment. It depends now for what happens 
it just depends, doesn't it? You know, if we can go on a good running run, the pressure will ease off him even more. If we are to get get back to if we go back to square one, then the pressure will be back on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because, like I said to you, Solskjaer has been in the, the exact same position as he was in at the first part of last season because at the first part of last season we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And at that point, there was talks of Mauricio, Pochettino, Masmiliano, Allegri coming in. Uh, we know recently there's obviously been talks of Mauricio, Pochettino coming in to replace Solskjaer and we're seeing Masmiliano, Allegri as a alternative. But since Solskjaer came at Manchester United, he has spent over £200 million. He's, we've obviously seen a lot of players leave since he got recommended into the club. I like the way he has promoted the youth. Um, our record against the top six sides last season was good. Was good. We've had some good periods under Solskjaer. So they are the positives you can take. Not all of it's negativity regarding him. And not all of the blame stems from Solskjaer anyway. You know, I think the board are to blame. Because the board, Woodward and the Glazers and that, you know, they've not backed any of the managers that we've had since Ferguson retired. They didn't back Moyes enough, they didn't back Louis van Gaal enough, and they didn't back Jose Mourinho enough. And that, now they haven't backed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough. In that summer transfer window, we missed out on all of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's priority targets. And we missed out on a lot of targets in general. So, you know, a lot of United fans have been demanding the board out of the football club. Um, I do think next year uh, Manchester United will get rid of more players. Uh, we're obviously you know, looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We're looking to get rid of Marcus Rojo. We're looking to get rid of Phil Jones. Sergio Romero, he's also open to leaving the football club. Uh, towards the end of the summer transfer, when the Solskjaer was saying that he was prepared to sell Daniel James for around £25 million. But our board had a disagreement over this. Um, but yeah, like I said, in the last seven years, we have been playing catch up. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. We've only won four trophies since Ferguson retired, and that was the FA Cup under Van Gaal, the Europa League and the League Cup, and the Community Shield under Jose Mourinho. We, like I said, we've had different managers with different philosophies. You know, we spent nearly £1 billion on players since Ferguson left. We've recruited. Over 30 odd players in since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. So there you go. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.